Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it's time to have a look at another devlog for the next major update in War Thunder, and this one is for a South African SPAAG. This is the Bosvark. So following the Istavark, now we have the Bosvark. This thing is looking pretty fun, and also, finally, when it comes to Britain, after the introduction of the Istavark, and then the Skink, and now the Bosvark, the middle AA issues with Britain are finally solved. It's been really nice to see over the last year or so that the the issue of that, which has been around for what feels like four or five years, has finally been fixed, and also with the USSR getting uh, their uh, machine as well uh, to try and help them out, the good old uh, ZD, and uh, other nations getting their AAs. Hopefully this spreads to everyone else, so therefore we can have parity across all of the nations. But when it comes to the Bosvark, uh, it is looking really cool. The design itself is definitely interesting. Let's get into the history of this vehicle. During the South African border war, lasting throughout the 1960s up until the late 1980s, the South African Defence Force managed to capture large quantities of ZU-23-2 towed anti-air guns. Being in popular use by Angolan forces, the SADF used these guns primarily as base defense and also training. After the war, these guns were no longer required and put into storage. In the early 1990s, however, the SADF sought to mount the newly purchased ZU 232 on a mine resistant chassis. Shortly after, Arms Corps identified the Samuel 100 transporter as a suitable platform and modified it to house the ZU-23-2. The first prototype underwent testing in April of 1991 and serial production followed by the end of the year. Surprisingly, the ZU-23-2 gun was meant to be used in the ground support role rather than primarily in the anti-aircraft role. The Bosvark, as it became known, entered service with the 10 Air Defence Artillery Regiment of the South African National Defence Force. The Bosvark is yet to see combat action and is only operated by the SANDF. So what the Bosvark basically is, is the ZU-232 on what seems to be a flatbed truck. Uh, if you're not familiar with the ZU-232, the twin turret, it is the exact same one which is on the BTRZD. Now, the BTRZD gun, and also the chassis itself, has gone up in BR several times because of the high velocity and also high rate of fire of the uh, rounds from the uh, gun. So I feel like with the Bosvark, it'll probably have similar stuff, which would be quite nice. Um, so that uh, will be quite good for it. Uh, each cannon only has a 50 round magazine, uh, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, the reload shouldn't be too bad and all of that. Uh, this vehicle will be good in the AA portion. Uh, it'll be great against light vehicles as well. You can just sit at the end of a road and absolutely annihilate something. At the same time, uh, it may have a bunch of empty space in it, uh, so therefore, um, if somebody HGs you, you'll probably get overpressured, but if somebody shoots like AP at you, maybe the round will just go straight through um, because of this uh, size of this thing. There are so many vehicles for South Africa which are just absolutely massive, stuff like the G6 Rhino. Uh, also, at the same time, the rattle is pretty big uh, for what it is, and even the elephants um, with the Mark II uh, being a chunky monkey. And the Bosvark is no different. Uh, basically, what you have is a massive machine uh, which has access just to the 23 millimeters. There's no real armor on this thing. Uh, the driver's cabin itself has 10 millimeters of steel plating, so this thing will get machine gunned to death. The crew on the gun is obviously open uh, compared to closed, uh, so, you know, it's uh, it just uh, kind of is at the end of the day. But this thing is coming into rank 4 of uh, the British tech tree. So what it'll do is it'll give you an option. Do you want to take this, or do you want to take the skink, or do you want to take the Istavark uh, as you go up in BR? And I think that's really good. Um, I'm really happy that South Africa was added to the British tag tree. I know some people wanted the South Africans to be independent, especially since Israel uh, was uh, deemed to, to be good enough to be independent, or maybe they didn't know where to put it. 
but South Africa for me uh, would always flourish more as a add-on to the British. Just like how if they add Finland uh, in the next major updates or whenever, it would be much better as an add-on to Sweden, uh, which would be really nice. I feel like going forward uh, with these uh, other nations, what they should be done is tagged to the nations we already have in the game, just for the sake of grinding and just for the sake of it being easier for new players having to deal with it. We already have so many nations in War Thunder, adding extra ones as independent ones is only going to cause issues. And we have a prime example of why it's nice uh, for these nations to actually get added to previous ones. Britain really struggled in the mid-tier AA department. It pretty much didn't exist for the longest time. You went from the Crusader AA Mark I and Mark II, which were World War II platforms based on the Crusader, one having 20mm Orlikans and the other having 140mm Bofors, all the way up to the Falcon, uh, which is a TD. Um, <laughs> the Well, it's an everything destroyer, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so you had this huge gap uh, with it. And now, with the Skink, which is Canadian, and then also the Bosvark and the Eastervark, now that area is kind of fixed. And this really shows, uh, this one dev blog, and also those additions of last year, why mixing these tech trees are important. Not just for the fact that to get the vehicles in the game, but to actually balance out the general lineups that you have in the game. And uh, therefore, you know, you can you can actually have a bit more fun. So that's why nowadays I'm much more interested in just getting vehicles into the game, into tech trees that will kind of balance out their uses uh, so we can have parity between them. Uh, that has been a major focus for me personally over the last few years. And with stuff like the Bosvar getting added in, even though it may just be a 23mm on a large platform, first of all, it looks really cool. And second of all, it increases that idea that we talked about before. And that, to me, is incredibly important, uh, which is, you know, something something that uh, hopefully will continue in War Thunder. As they add more and more and more stuff for the higher echelons of the game, people seem to always focus on them when it comes to balance. Top tier will never be balanced. We've talked about it before. It's impossible to balance. Uh, but when it comes to the mid-tier stuff, it definitely can be balanced or it can at least be better balanced, which is why it is nice to see additions which will hopefully help that. And uh, at the same time, you know, there's a few other things going on when it comes to War Thunder in the next updates, which will hopefully improve that as well. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Forge, Siegebreak, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, Elove Goat, Pyman, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, and also Sem Arslan, Wilkski, uh, Uncle Bean, Derek R., Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.